pretty self-explanatory. Now you've done this, you've got some information, and you can decide on the focus for your guided reading instruction. The child is showing you. Here's what I understand. Here's what I'm really confused about. And when we started this, I said, if I could only do one assessment, this would be it. This tells me so much of what I need to know about them. And especially now with Jan Richardson's guided reading book, how she has really um, focused on each guided reading level and what you need to be doing with them. These things work together really well. All right. Um, this was another thing that I found in Jan Richardson's guided reading book that I am really happy that she put in there. Um, it is on pages 45 to 47. I tried to send you back into her book whenever I could. She says, these are priority ranked and should be addressed during guided reading. And what she's telling us is that the most important thing is risk-taking behavior when they're reading. The child when, who, who only looks at you when they come to a tricky word has no risk-taking behaviors. They don't know what to do. The child who's just sitting there and doing nothing, they don't know what to do. So this is number one. After that is self-monitoring. They need to know that you read to make sense and that they need to be paying attention to what they read. After that is word solving, decoding. <coughs> then fluency, then the oral retail. Now some people would say, oh, comprehension is the most important thing. Well, yes, it's why we read, but they cannot get to this if they can't do these. And comprehension can be addressed also during whole group <coughs> read-alouds. Um, Debbie Miller's work that she did with um, comprehension strategies. So you can be teaching comprehension how to think about it at the same time that you're addressing these things in your guided reading. Does this make sense to you? <laughs> and she, um, in her book, talks about these in more detail. Okay. So, if you're dealing with emergent readers, levels A, B, and C, these are your goals. One-to-one -one matching, using meaning, using <coughs> known words, using that first letter, cross-checking the picture and the first letter, blending CVC words, and reading with phrasing and expression. Is everyone aware of the purpose of level A and B books? That level A and B books, level A has one line of text on each page, highly patterned and predictable, Level B is still highly patterned and predictable, but now there are two lines of text. Levels A and B were developed to teach the four early behaviors. One-to-one -one correspondence, directionality, left to right and return sweep, locating known words, and that's useful for monitoring. If I know the word the, then when I point to it, I need to say the, and they don't always do that. And then locating unknown words. And some of you have heard me tell this story before. When I was first learning about the four early behaviors and they got to the part where they said locating unknown words and I thought, what are you talking about? Uh, my kindergartners can locate all kinds of unknown words. I don't know that one and I don't know that one and I don't know that one. And that's not what it means. What it means is you've got the little book there and there's that puppy and I can say to them, can you find the word puppy on this page? And they frame it for me. How do you know? Starts with P. So they've located it using letters and sounds. So again, one-to-one -one matching, directionality, locating known words, and locating unknown words. And then you can see those are in there. <coughs> and learning to do these things. When you move to level C, now there's a little story involved to help drive meaning. Let's face it, levels A and B don't have a lot to comprehend. <laughs> but that's because that's not what it's for. Level C, now there's a story, and comprehension can help to drive that reading. 
and you can start teaching them to use meaning when they're cross-checking. And by the way, at level C is when the finger pointing starts to come away on familiar text. We don't want to keep them pointing on familiar text because it slows their reading down. Just an aside. So those are the goals for emergent readers. Next we have the goals, I think, for early readers. So you want to be choosing texts that give them opportunities to monitor and to decode. If you're working on fluency, then use easier text, especially text with dialogue, because that will help them to read like a person talks, and that can be one of your goals. If you are working on retelling, use a story, a fiction piece, with a very clear problem and solution. Okay, so now the transitional readers, same kinds of things. Most of the kids we work with are going to be at that early stage. We'll have some moving into transitional. But you can see how the text you're choosing is going to be based on what it is you're trying to help them to do. And this will guide you, and Jan's book really lays that out. And with the new books that you have, you will have um, a lot of choices that will allow you to do that. Okay. Yes, thank you. We don't have fluent readers. But if you did, it would be this page. We can go on.